Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I have the opportunity to, to solve two things, actually. We're going to be working on a uh, an older Daiwa. This is the Daiwa B130. It's a um, kind of a bronze fishing reel. I guess the two things I'm going to solve is I'll show you how to take this apart and service it. This one came in from Scott. He found it at a flea market out in uh, Southern California. We're going to tune this up, make sure that uh, it works nicely. I like this generation of reels. They're very solid and dependable. They are metal frame. They're in the late 1970s, early 1980s. And uh, the other thing, uh, a fellow named Gary, who watches our channel, uh, well, he asked me if I have a spare spool. Well, I don't have that spool. I do have uh, a lot of these metal spools that were interchangeable. So you'll find that there are um, uh, B-130s, and then there's the 1330s, and there's all kinds of J-130s, and they all kind of share the spool. And I just have to find one that uh, has the drag stack in it. The one that I have is kind of missing that drag stack right now. At any rate, uh, we're going to take this apart. We'll show you how to service it. We'll show you a little bit about the interior and what it was like to, to be a reel in uh, well, the late 1970s, early 1980s. And we'll start by removing the exterior pieces and parts. When I do that, I want to uh, find a nice place for them. I'll use a uh, uh, parts tray. My parts tray is a fast food container. I also like to wear a protective glove to keep the dirt and old greases off of my hand as best I can. And uh, I also want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel while I'm doing this. Uh, fills the dead air time, I guess. But we're going to pull a couple of screws out. And if you like to see how fishing reels are serviced, if you like to learn about fishing reels, Maybe you have one and you're, uh, you're trying to figure out how to do it yourself. Well, that's what this channel encourages you to do. Keep your reels fishing, give them a second chance, and uh, do it yourself. So, to those that can't do it themselves, well, or don't have the time to do it themselves, they send them in and that becomes primary uh, input for my channel in terms of what the videos become. Well, I encourage a couple of things. That parts tray and the glove is one of them. Another one is when you take your side plate screws out. Do a, um, take a minute to uh, make sure that they're all the same size. And I've learned from experience they're not always the same size. Uh, so uh, do that. Well, this one just kind of fell off. And what we can see here, Scott picked up a reel that's very dry. And from the way that this grease has accumulated on the shaft, I'd say it's probably been stored uh, either on a rod rack like this or uh, maybe resting in a a desk or something, I don't know. Everything uh, has to do with gravity here and it's all sagged down to one side. So that's uh, been an issue. You want to take pictures as you take the reel apart. The reason for that is, well, parts can get put in upside down, backwards, or sometimes you just lose your way. And if you lose your way, well, then you're in search of some things. So take pictures, use your, use your cell phone, use your digital camera. Hey, even do a video if you like. Uh, all right, well, we're going to pull the inside of the spool and the adjuster knob off. We'll show you how to service the spool in just a little bit. We have the side case that fell out. We'll show you how to service that. And the uh, last thing we want to do here, we want to remove the axle shaft. And uh, we want to clean that up, too. So I'm going to grab a paper towel. I'm going to grab a little screwdriver here. I'm just going to try and free up some of that old grease. And boy, that is chunky. And old, but it's not terrible. I've seen a lot worse than this. So right now, I'll just try and clear that way to the the screw that holds in the crosswind block. That's a Phillips head screw, and you want to notice the orientation on this. I know I say from time to time. I've seen reels come into me because they were working before somebody started servicing them. And when they stopped servicing them, they weren't working any longer. And the problem almost always is that a part is installed upside down, backwards, or in the wrong position. And, well, we can get it corrected. You can, too. You can go to the Internet, go find the schematic for the fishing reel. That'll give you a burst diagram of the way that the parts are laid out. And generally, that can get you back on track. But if you take pictures at critical junctures as you're taking the reel apart, that's going to save you the time and the hassle of doing that. We've removed the crosswind block screw. Now we're going to pull the axle shaft up. And again, with that old grease in there, it might be a little bit difficult to do. 
wipe off the axle shaft and take a look at it. If it's nice and smooth, you don't need to do anything further. Uh, if it's got some old dried grease on it, of course you want to clean that. This is your cross wind block. Now we want to take that out and get that all that old dirt and grease and grime and junk out of the way. This is a relatively simply designed reel, which is probably why it's still here 30 or 40 or 50 years after it's been uh, manufactured, because, well, simplicity in my case generally rules. There's a lot of uh, over-engineered reels, and I'm sure there's benefits to them. I, I'm not going to argue that a, a Shimano Stellar fighting a tarpon is a whole lot better than a, uh, a Shakespeare reel, maybe. But, uh, you know, for the most part, especially when you get into these 30 size and 20, 30, and 40 size reels, that engineering just isn't going to make that much difference. Personal opinion. All right, I've wiped all of that off. I'm going to just kind of flip this over for a moment. We're going to take off the rotor and uh, just make sure that we can clean the pinion gear. This one is held in place by a C-clip. What you want to do is pull up on the bottom. There's a little piece that you can locate. There's a tab on each side. Use a, a little uh, pick or something to get in there. Small screwdriver, perhaps. Just take your time. There's a whole host of reasons and broken fishing reels that just uh, were good, but well, somebody rushed something, so somebody tried to force something. Or what have you. This is a symmetrical clip, so it's not going to matter which side goes in on which when you uh, re restore. With that clip out, you can pull the rotor out, and you want to do that because sometimes you're going to find that there's a lot of dirt, debris, and junk in this little cavity here. So clean that up, and while you got it out, give it a good cleaning. This is your opportunity to clean the reel up nicely. This is a dead end of the bale assembly. Nothing much required there. I like to flush the non uh, or the, the spring side of this and then just work it in. This has got what's called a bang bale. There is no trip lever under here. I call it a bang bale. Lord knows what the engineers call it. But when that comes down, there's an arm here that's going to, well, it's going to bang this piece on the, the reel and that's going to force it to trip back. So just Make sure it's nice and loose. I flushed it out with some penetrating oil. We'll add a little fishing reel oil there now. Work that in and that's fine. When you're servicing a reel, you do not need to remove the bale and the bale spring. Well, unless you're having an issue with it. So if you find that it's a sticky bale uh, and the penetrating oil doesn't seem to free it up, well, then go ahead and uh, take that off and clean beneath it. But if, if it's working satisfactorily, no need to put yourself through that. All right, so that's a quick clean up there. The case is nice and clean. And you can see that this case is used for more than one thing. This uh, little stud on the back here would handle an oscillation gear if that was the setup for this reel, but it's not. Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, put the rotor back on. We've kind of serviced it. It's an easy reel to service. So if you have one of these, I want to encourage you to, to jump right on it. Make sure that you do that. And I want to encourage you to use fishing reel grease and fishing reel oil when you do that. Uh, there's no excuse. It's not expensive. You can get it online. There's a whole host of groups just uh, in your online search. Go ahead and put in fishing reel oil or fishing reel grease. And uh, there'll be a lot of people looking to sell you it. So there you go. All right. So we've just reinstalled the rotor by putting that C-clip in there. Now we'll come over to our uh, gear side and we want to remove this main gear and behind that main gear we have the anti-reverse dog. So when you remove the main gear just push the, the anti-reverse dog over to the side. Use your thumb on that slide bar there so that it can come out easily and you'll see that we have a little bit of the old grease behind here as well. So I'm just going to use a cotton swab to clean that off. A good place to take the picture, make sure that you know where all these pieces are in the process. Well, one of the things I did when I did that uh, move back, I dislodged the spring for the anti-reverse dog. So this would be a case where 
you're going to have an oops moment. And you're going to say, how the heck do I get it to go? Because it's not flipping back. Well, that tag leg on that spring belongs on the other side of the post here. So if you have yours apart and you're watching this video because you can't figure out where that goes, it goes right there. And it's just kind of works like that. And now when you pull it back, it's going to work for you. All right. Let's just clean that little bit of grease that's on that side here. So this reel was, was greased up and probably put into storage for a while. And that's one of the reasons why reels over time make it to flea markets, right? They, the reels are uh, working well. And whoever was using the reel either found a new friend, a uh, new favorite reel, or maybe stopped fishing, or whatever, and they uh, they set it aside. The grease hardens, and then uh, when it's time to uh, to take it out again, it doesn't work right. And well, people just say, "Oh, I guess I, I must have put it in there because it was broken," or the previous owner must have put it in there because it was broken. Whatever the, uh, the reason. Uh, once they do that, the, uh, the puddles, the pools, and the only way to solve this problem is to, well, do what I'm doing here, a good cleaning. Push your main gear down. Remember that you have that beak, so you have to push this in to set that main gear. And if you like, you can put the handle on now to hold that main gear in place. Well, there's not much more to go on this. It's an easier reel to service. As we mentioned, we cleaned up the front here, and the only thing you really need to do is get a little bit of grease into the slot of that anti uh, of that cross wind block, and then there's two posts at the back end of that rides on. So inside the case, put a, a good amount of grease onto that, and if you remember correctly, it's going to ride this way. If I remember correctly, all right. We made sure that the uh, shaft was nice and clean, no pitting or anything. Scott's doing a good job of finding reels that um, can be given second chances when he's out there doing his, his flea market searches. A lot of times folks just buy other people's problems and well, they become parts reels. I actually have a box of those that uh, we'll do a video on in just a, a little while. Scott sent another box in of uh, his flea market finds. I have one box that I found at a flea market and it's one of those boxes where everybody would probably say why are you why are you doing this right because I spent a couple of dollars on a box that you know, didn't have a lot of good reels in it but it had a lot of parts reels in it. Alright so what we want to do now is we want to locate the stud on the main gear and the track for the uh, shaft and when we put this in we're going to be moving this a little bit to set that case. Move that to the uh, perpendicular side and this is kind of eyeballing now. After a while you kind of figure it out. We're a little bit high you want to spin that to make sure you're in. I just pulled my case in and we'll start the screws and then we'll make sure that that anti-reverse override is working on that. We have three screws that are the same size and they're in a triangle so it doesn't matter which one you start with or which one comes next but I'll go high and then low and then I'll go left. I want to keep equal tension on this case just to Make sure that we don't put torsion or twist into this. That becomes a problem a little bit later. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, if you leave those questions in the comments section, I do try to answer them on a regular basis. And that's usually the morning after a video is posted. So just I would ask you to be patient, just as you should be patient when you're working on fishing reels. And if you're patient, uh, I will try to respond the next day. Some take me a little longer. I, like Gary had sent me an email and it asked me if I have the handle, uh, I'm sorry, the spool for this particular reel. And it took me a little while to just check and make sure. 
All right, let's test that. Oh, I can hear that the anti-reverse dog is working. Let's make sure that the override is working. It is, and this is uh, this is running nicely again. There's one, only one other thing to do here, and that's to service the drag washers. They are inside the cavity on the top of the spool, and you need to make sure that they're clean. And uh, if you're not clean, if they're, if they're brittle, if they're broken, they're not going to function properly. So we're going to take a moment here to get this little pentagon clip out. Then we're going to remove the drag stack. And in this case, this drag stack appears to have Teflon washers in it. Well, if it has the Teflon washers in it, generally speaking, no service is required. And you know what? The, the folks over at Dyer were pretty good about that. They understood where this reel was headed when it was sold. And they realized that most of the people that, that buy this reel probably weren't going to take the time to service it. Or more importantly, I guess, if they uh, if they had that reel uh, and it was going to be taken in for service, the issue probably would be the cost of the service, and uh, well, it would probably be tossed, which is unfortunate. We have a hard washer and a uh, what are called keyed washers below. That's the first one in. They're clean. Teflon doesn't tend to to. Uh, accumulate a lot of dirt or dried grease. What it does do, however, is it gets scarred. So if you have sand in that cavity, for example, uh, it will run rings on that and it'll make it less effective. They are self-lubricating, so you don't need to oil them. The middle washer is always what's called an eared washer on a six drag set. Here's your top one. And then we have the last of the keyed washers. That's the one that has a triangle in the center. And then we have that clip. So that's all you have to do is service that drag stack in the spool. Top drag systems have a lot of water that splashes in on it because the line comes over the top of the spool, comes over here, and it sheds the water as it's wrapping around the spool. As it's shedding that water, it's, it's a bowl. There's not very many places for it to go and almost all the time it will go inside the reel and if it goes inside the reel it gets the, the drag washers compromised. So, so make sure as you're servicing your reel if you have a top drag that you do just what we did here. Let's go ahead and put the spool back on. We'll put the adjuster back on. We'll do a final test. When you're putting that knob on make sure that it goes on correctly. Don't force something if it's not seating properly, stop and reset it. You don't want to cross strip that and break that knob. You won't break the post in this case, you'll break the knob. All right, it's nice and tight. Back it off. You don't need to compress those. And then let's give it that final test. So we got a nice smooth operating wheel here. We got a bale that trips nice and easily. We got it serviced, clean, greased and oiled, ready to go fishing again. So Thanks to Scott for sending that in. And Chris, you now know what the B-130 Daiwa is. And Gary, I now know the spool I'm looking for, so I will see if I can find one for you. Uh, before I leave, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel for everything they do to keep us safe. Your efforts are appreciated. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, keep your fishing tackle uh, serviced and ready to go, because you never know when that bite is going to run. And to everybody, have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.